Thank you for joining us today to learn more about physical literacy. The Active Kids would like to welcome back our guest speaker, Richard Monet, from Active for Life to talk about engaging staff and parents in physical literacy. We have a great presentation scheduled today and a lot of people are on the webinar, so we ask that everyone mute their phones and computers if you have not done so already. If you need to make a comment or ask a question, please do so in the chat box or the question box. We will get to those at the end. Richard leads Active for Life, an initiative dedicated to mobilizing the grassroots about the importance of physical literacy for children. When not educating Canadian moms and dads about the importance of physical literacy, Richard is part of the leadership team of B210, a privately funded organization that supports elite Canadian athletes. He is also a sports psychology consultant to Olympic and professional athletes and consults with business leaders on the value of being purposeful. Richard is a proud papa of two very active kids, as well as an avid minor hockey coach, golfer, and hiker. Welcome, Richard. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, we'll switch to my screen. Okay, just need confirmation. Can you see my screen? Okay, the presentation today is called Born to Move, Engaging Parents and Staff in Fiscal Literacy. And uh, before we start, um, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, Active for Life. So I'm the lead of an initiative called Active for Life. And um, simply put, Active for Life exists for one purpose, which, which is to help people raise physically literate kids. And uh, the way we've designed our website, if you go to activeforlife.com, you'll find fun activities, engaging articles, and but most, more importantly, free resources and tools to really get kids to be physically literate, which uh, means they will most likely be active for life and therefore healthier and happier. Now, um, whoops, I'm having some issues with this second. So there's three parts to my presentation today. The first one, I will talk about fiscal literacy. And uh, for those who attended the last webinar, um, I will try to make this not too repetitive, but I will try to really put in context what is physical literacy and white matters for kids. Um, and then after that, we're going to talk about the importance of engaging what we call the front line, or you can also call it the grassroots or the gatekeepers but really engaging the people who are in a position to help kid, kids develop physical literacy. And when I talk about this, I'll talk a bit about the reasoning behind our initiative. Some of the things we've looked at when we did the, uh, a scan and analysis of the sector, the physical activity sector for children, and, um, you know, kind of the... Uh, the ideas and the concepts that we've put in place to structure the Active for Life initiative. And finally, uh, we'll go to the website itself, and I'm going to share some resources. And, and all these resources are free, uh, some resources for parents and some for professionals. Now, contrary to the last presentation where I focused on resources to teach or develop physical literacy, like lesson plans and so on, uh, in the resources for professional, I'm going to focus on resources available to help engage people into physical literacy. All right, so let's talk about physical literacy. In my last presentation, um, last webinar, I showed this image, these images from the late 50s, early 60s, to make the point that there was a time where kids uh, would play outside, and uh, they would play on supervised games outside. But more importantly, through these games, they would actually learn to move. Uh, the kid in the upper right corner is learning to bat, to swing a bat, and to hit a ball with a bat. The, the girls in the up lower left corner are, are learning agility, balance, and uh, skipping, and so on. Uh, and as we discussed last time, the nature of the games that kids play has evolved. Uh, players move from, first of all, from outside to mostly inside, and also from very active 
to most likely inactive. So the lesson there, the one concept that we need to remember as we go forward is that times have changed and kids are born with the desire and the need to play. Play is a huge uh, conduit, a huge medium for human beings to, to learn. So everyone's born with the desire to play. The only thing that we're not born with are the skills to move. So that's a big shift. So if we summarize all this, expert tells tell us that today's kids are most likely the most inactive in history. We're not talking just about 10, 20, 30 years. We're talking ever. And because of that, uh, some other experts tell us that they probably have a shorter life expect expectancy than their parents. Now, there's a few things that uh, are important in the rapid change. First of all is the change from being active and learning to move through games to being mostly inactive has happened quite rapidly. Uh, if you consider that we've been moving as long as we've been on this planet, and over the last 30 years, maybe we've basically stopped moving. It's quite a drastic and unprecedented, sorry, I can't say that word in English, decline. Uh, the other thing to remember is that kids don't learn to move early. And that is the issue. And that is why we have to create a term, a concept called physical literacy. 50 years ago, you didn't need to talk about physical literacy. Kids learn to move. Uh, today, we, we needed a concept to really help parents and frontline people and educators focus on this, on this fact that kids don't learn to move. And of course, if you add uh, the importance of phones, um, tablets, computers, video games, you name it, another thing that has changed drastically over the last few decades is that kids now spend at least eight hours a day in front of a screen. And these studies, are talking about time uh, at school and outside of school, but there is a tendency over the last few years that there's actually a lot of kids that spend almost eight hours looking at the screen outside of school. So if you add it to the time they do spend, you know, in front of the screen in school plus after school, you get a, a pretty amazing amount of hours being inactive just watching a screen. And of course, being inactive is making the kids sick. Uh, we're born to move, designed to move. When we don't move, bad things happen. Now, uh, this is about physical literacy and, and, and thankfully there is a solution and physical literacy is one of those solutions. And I think what we need to remember is that if we, we prioritize reading and writing and mathematics and so on and science as integral part of, uh, of kids' development today. But we need to remember and we need to sell the concept that just like reading and writing, kids need to learn to move. It's essential. Um, and there's a direct connection between how much kids are active, how much they move, and how well they do at school, they do socially, and uh, they do in terms of their health. So um, I think, you know, when you look at the cost of inactivity, and for us in Canada, that, that's a big thing. We, uh, our health system is paid through our taxes. And when we look at our bill, health bill every year as a country, it, it keeps going up and up and up. And the estimate, you know, when you couple smoking, obesity, and inactivity. Um, experts estimate that the cost of all these things, if they keep rising as they are now, will double by 2025. And that's a huge uh, amount of resources going to something that could be prevented. Now, last time uh, I presented this old diagram to synthesize what physical literacy is about, and uh, it comes down to three concepts. Kids need to be competent to move, and that's the ability that we talked earlier. That's a concept that kids need to learn to move. Uh, if I learn to throw a ball early in life, I'm more likely to play basketball, football, baseball. Uh, if I learn to run properly, I will play 
most likely games where I, I have to run um, from lacrosse to football to rugby, whatever it could be, or simply track and field. And, and what happens is when kids develop the confidence, they realize that as they realize they're becoming better, their confidence in, in their ability to move grows. And these concepts together increase their motivation to move. So it's really simple. The more you move, the better you become at it, the more you realize you're good at it, the more you want to do it, and the more fun you have. And, it's, um, and each of these elements feed into each other. Now, the, when we're talking about physical literacy, we're also talking about a diversity of skills and many kinds of activities. So one thing we're not talking about is having a kid specialize in baseball at eight, where at eight years old, they do nothing else but baseball. And also, it's not just about sport, uh, dance, uh, hiking, playing outdoors, playing in nature are all elements that help grow the diversity of movement skills acquired by kids early in life. And the last thing I want to say about this is that what we learn to do early in life, we most likely will do for life. The habits we develop early in life will stay with us. Be, they become part of our DNA, of our makeup, our, uh, of who we are. So it's really important to include positive experiences where kids do different skills, different movements over and over again, where they develop the confidence to challenge themselves to do more, and then they develop the uh, skills that enables them to participate actively for the rest of their life. So let's, um, let's, uh, let's assume that you're sold on the importance of physical literacy. Let's assume that um, you realize that over the last 25 years, there's been a change in our culture and that we must adapt to that change, that we must really help kids learn to move. Um, Here's how you can engage other people into this belief. So when you, we come back to Active for Life, one thing that we've decided to do at the beginning of this initiative is we did a scan of the physical activity and physical literacy sector. And what we realized is that there was a lot of organizations uh, from government to private to uh, charities or not-for-profit that put a lot of resources and energy into what we call the top-down approach. So this could be uh, in Canada, for example, we've got some organizations that promote uh, the benefits of being physically active on TV and they, and they run these ads and it's at large. So there's no real engagement, but there's promotion of these concepts. Or we've got some other organizations that are working, for example, uh, one called uh, Sport for Life that works with our NSOs, our national sport organizations, to help them improve the way they deliver sports to kids to ensure that kids develop physical literacy and become active for life and also more proficient in the sport. So these are all activities that we call from the top down. It, they affect uh, organizations at the top, but often, from what we've observed, um, the effects on the gra at the grassroots are not as significant as they should be. So when we started Active for Life, we decided to focus on what we call the grassroots. And, and, and the key concept here is that we decided to focus on the gatekeepers. So when we ask ourselves, Okay, why aren't kids moving more, even though all the, this money is being invested in television ads and programs? Why aren't kids moving in? Why aren't kids more active? And what we realize is that most of these programs, even though they're well intended, are based on good intentions, um, they not really focus on the true gatekeepers of, of, of kids, of children's time. And those gatekeepers are the parents first. And we decided to act on changing the mentality, the understanding, and mobilizing parents into this, this movement. 
And we also realized that beyond parents, other gatekeepers were very pro, pro, very important in kids' lives. So teachers, activity leaders in, in daycares and child care, child care centers, coaches in uh, youth uh, sport teams, and so on. So we decided to act from the grassroots up in order to leverage, supplement, uh, multiply the effect of all the other organizations working from the top down. Now, the other concept that was key at the onset is, is summarized by Dr. Dean Creeler, who is one of the experts in physical activity and health and physical literacy in Canada and, and the world. Um, he summarized it really well when he said, promotion without provision will not change behaviors. So what we decided to do at Active for Life, and when you look at our website, you'll see, you'll see elements of this everywhere, is we decided that we, work to, that we would actually um, work on two elements at the same time. We called this our two-prong approach. And we decided, or we realized, or actually, we, we drew the hypothesis that in order to engage people, in order to engage kids, in, in order to really get people moving, we needed to first increase the number of parents who know that physical literacy is good for their kids. And that is what we called, in, in, for lack of a better term, to increase the demand. But we realized that promotion without provision, as Dr. Kriller, Kriller has put it, was, would not lead to great change in our society. So we, we also endeavored to work on increasing the number of programs that develop physical literacy in children. In other words, to increase the offer. And what we, we've observed over the last five years, in Canada at least, is there's a, a growing number of parents who understand what physical literacy is and why it matters. It really matters for kids. And What's really interesting is that these parents, once they're educated and they're mobilized, they start looking for such program. So we have seen and supported uh, a rise in the number of programs that develop physical literacy, uh, the number of pro programs being offered. And one of the reasons more programs are offered is because more parents know, and one of the reasons more parents know is because those programs uh, in most cases, don't only deliver programming, but we work with programs for them to also become centers of education for parents. So I know it might sound a bit complex, but I, I, I'll explain it a bit more in detail later, but as you go forward in trying to develop physical literacy in your country, think of these two prongs. Your parents become your... Um, the parents become the uh, catalyst to more programs as they go to their YMCA's and so on and ask for such program. And at the same time, the programs become the educators of parents. Uh, one example here in Calgary, uh, in Alberta, which is a province in Canada, there's a big center called Windsport. And um, three years ago, they changed entire programming, summer programming, so that they have summer camps for kids. And they turned all their programs so to develop physical literacy in children. And again, it's not simply sport-based, but a lot of our arts and crafts and so on that would actually help kids develop physical literacy. And what they've done is we've worked with Windsport and we've provided them with material. And they started distributing educational material to parents and basically instructed their, their instructors, their leaders, to, to talk about physical literacy. So parents would come and watch the kids uh, engage in activities and, you know, kids were having fun. And then the parents would be told, well, this is what's happening here. Your son, your daughter is developing balance and this is really important for, you know, their overall level of physical activity for the rest of their lives and so on. So this is really a key concept as, um, as you go forward. Now, the other idea at the start of Active for Life that is playing out to, that is becoming a reality, is we decided from the get-go to turn science into what, what we call the right sound bites. One thing that we've realized when we did our original scan and analysis 
sector in, in of organizations trying to trying to promote physical activity in kids and actually in, in, in the population at large, we realized that often uh, the information presented was too complex, uh, too dry, um, too scientific, or too long. So we're, we decided to really um, shape our language, our communication pieces, to be simple and in a language that parents would understand, but also not only understand, but they would start using themselves. And uh, I'm going to use an example uh, to demonstrate this. So I don't know about you, but my kids in school are actually asked to bring water. They, they, they are asked by their teachers, by their school, to bring a water bottle so they can drink throughout the day. And um, about four years ago, I, I looked into that. I, I went to my son's uh, elementary school, and I saw all the water bo bottles on the table. And, and it made me think about the fact that when I went to school, I'm in my early 50s, so I went to school in the 60s and 70s, and I realized that in those days, to actually uh, bring a water bottle in school was not allowed. Uh, we were barely allowed to go out to drink water. So I wonder what changed. And I looked into it a bit deeper, because for me, I, I, the question I put on the table was, well, if we've gone, if we understand now we've gone to a time where kids were not allowed to drink water in school, in class, to a time where they're actually encouraged and invited to do so, and we understand what happened there, we could probably apply these concepts to, to physical activity. So here's what happened. Here's what I discovered. There's some science that came out on the importance of drinking water. And uh, I actually found the original uh, studies on, on the internet. And, and, and to play on words, the, the original studies were quite uh, hard to read. They were quite dry and quite long. But someone, somewhere, came up with an amazing idea to simplify and bring it down to a simple concept. Eight cups of water a day is good for you. So that was the beginning of the change. So you, they went from science to the right sound bite. And then something else happened that was quite extraordinary. And I'm going back to the 80s on this, um, late 80s, early 90s. And these pictures don't reflect celebrities from those days, but those were the most actual pictures I could find. But something happened in the late 80s, early 90s, is a lot of celebrities uh, were seen drinking water at all times. Because they, celebrities and, and people in, in, in the public eye realized that in order to feel good and look good and be healthy, they needed to drink water. And that really multiplied uh, the message. It really leveraged the message. So it's not only that science and doctors and experts were telling people it's good to drink water, um, the normal people, everyday people would look at celebrities and see them drinking water as well. Uh, for those of you that are as old as I am, if you go back to People magazine in the 90s, you couldn't turn the page without seeing uh, a celebrity drinking uh, from an Evian water bottle, which made Evian quite rich, actually, and also created an issue with water bottles, plastic bottles, but that's not a story. So the next step, uh, parents started going to school and saying to principals, and I did ask the principal of a school year, a local school, if this was true, and he said, yeah, it was true. We um, Parents started asking us in the 90s to allow their kids to drink water in school because it was good for the kids. So that's how science turned into the right soundbite and supported by the right celebrities showing the example became the norm. And now, I don't know about where you live, but here water in class is the norm. So this is really what we endeavor to do with physical literacy. What we do is we, we take science that tells us physical literacy is critical, vital for kids. If they develop physical literacy, they will be more active. And if they're more active, they will be healthier, happier, they'll do better at school, and probably better in life in general. So uh, these are all ideas and sound bites that you can share to engage people. 
So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll, I'll show you some resources. So on the screen you'll see, I'm going to go to the website, but if you download my, the presentation you'll see exactly where I'm going on the website to, uh, for these, these resources. So in these three tabs, you'll find these two tabs here in red, you'll find resources for parents that you can share with parents to engage them in the importance of fiscal literacy. And under Pro Resource, you'll find resources where you can actually, that your organization can use to engage others in fiscal literacy. So let's go to the website. That should take a few seconds usually. There we go. I love when uh, technology actually works. So this is what our website, activeforlife.com, looks like. Um, as we're talking about engaging parents, the first thing I want to, to, to bring to your attention is that we use a technique of, uh, well, I, I don't know if you've ever gone to a shopping mall and uh, there's, um, I, I don't know, um, let's say a candy store and there's someone standing outside the candy store, the donut store, the bakery, with little pieces, little nibbles of whatever they sell inside. And they're offering these for free to uh, people walking by. And that little nibble of that piece of chocolate gets you to go inside the store and buy more chocolate. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I'm saying that's the way it happens. So what we've done in Active for Life is we've realized, well, if we only talk about fiscal literacy, it might be a bit dry, it might be a bit complex. So what we do is we offer nibbles, we offer a diversity of, of pieces, of uh, content pieces to attract different kinds of parents. So we've got this one about baseball, uh, we've got something here about are we raising our girls to be afraid, and a piece, um, you know, about childhood experience. So we try to offer a diversity of articles that would uh, be of interest to different target audiences or segment of our audience. And we're selling, and I'm using the word selling intensely, even though our, our uh, initiative is completely uh, for the greater good, we do not sell advertising or anything on our website. It's funded privately by a charity and uh, it's all for the greater good. But we are selling physical literacy, but we're also selling an image, an experience of raising physically literate children. So beyond the content, what you find on the site, if you go on the physical literacy tab, you'll see resources for parents. So we'll go to this page. Now, what this page does, it synthesizes or puts in one place a lot of different resources for parents. So one that is quite popular and I've showed that I, I've gone to this one last time is what we call our infographic. So this is what our infographic looks like. And basically it explains in simple terms what fiscal literacy is about. Um, basically fiscal literacy is when kids have developed the skills and confidence to be physically active for life. So again, you've got the three elements here, skills, which is competence, confidence, and physically active for life, which uh, alludes to a kid's motivation and desire to be active for life. And then we present the life cycle, basically physically illiterate and physically active parents leads to active kids, and so on and so on. But mostly it highlights the benefits of being physically active. Uh, kids who are physically active are happier. They've got greater self-esteem. They do better at school. They've got reduced risk of heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes. They're basically healthier for life. And lo and behold, they also make more money, it seems. So that's uh, quite a good sales piece uh, for selling the importance of fiscal literacy to parents. And you also find all kinds of articles this piece. So if you're interested in this infographic, you can download it to print it. Uh, there's two formats. You basically download it, print it, and put it up uh, in your class, in your organizations, and so on. So that's on the, the first resources. Now there's a variety of other resources for parents, things like 
simple one like this one, children's daily activity log sheet. So it's a simple log sheet that you can print and uh, put on your fridge and keep a log of what activities your, your children are doing. To um, things like activities for babies and toddlers. This is quite popular in our health, uh, with health nurse, health health centers across uh, the country where uh, frontline people actually print these and give them out to new parents. They're very simple. Uh, they explain how to do each of the activity, uh, how you can have different variation, and what are the benefits. And this is where uh, health uh, healthcare centers, uh, workers, frontline people tell us this is really where parents appreciate this kind of information, where they see the benefits of doing these activities with, the, with their kids. Like in this case, this activity is called toddler seed ball, seeded ball play. And you know, the ben benefits is that it helps toddlers develop fine motor control and hands as well as anti coordination. And the moment parents know why, parents know why these things matter, they tend to do them more. So this is the resource for parents page and again you find it under the fiscal literacy tab and uh, I'll let you explore all these other resources actually I'll just use I'll just show you one more that I find quite a quite fun this is one of the first tools that we've developed way back when called our, our skill builder it's a very simple tool where uh, you choose the age of your child let's say two to four and it highlights the funda fundamental movement skills for this age. And then you can choose a skill. For example, I can choose, um, uh, let's say, skipping. And it shows, it explains exactly what skipping is. And it also shows the kind of activities that you can do with your, your kid to develop the uh, ability to skip. So we'll go back here. I'll go back to the main page. Now for the, um, so those are the, uh, the resources for parents. Now last time when I, I went to the professional resources, we went through all the resources like lesson plans and activities and modules, and et cetera. We focused more on teachers and educators and uh, daycare workers. What we'll do now, we're going to go to a section of this um, pro resources called Grow Your Programs. So we'll go there. And what we've done here is we've, we've combined in one, on one page, one web page, all the tools available, and again, and, and resources available to help engage people in the concept of physical literacy. One that is quite popular is called, uh, are, are called the Active for Life postcards. So these are postcards that we've designed. and. It, they're, they're, very, they're very simple image on one side and um, uh, some kind of a slogan in this case, I'll have to balance, help me develop physical literacy and I will be active for life. And on the back, there's a very short explanation of what physical literacy is and why it matters for parents. It matters for kids. And, and we've got different design with different activities and what we do at Active for Life is if you want some of these um, postcards, you just email us. So you just order postcards here, that tab, and this will lead to an email that will go directly to our outreach department, and we will send you uh, those postcards for free. Now, there's an option that might, is not available in the United, United States, but because we're a Canadian charity, we actually provide what we call um, uh, cold branded postcards. So basically, when we've got big organizations in Canada where, uh, let's say, the YMCA, for example, that want to use our postcards, and we know they will di distribute over 5,000 posts to, uh, to parents, then we actually design a postcard tailored to that organization. Um, I am not authorized to do that for the United States for free, but what we've done in the past, for example, we, we've had some interest from an organization in Scotland that works with teachers, and uh, we've uh, designed 
the postcard for them. So we've covered all the costs of designing and, and they're printing the postcard at their own cost. Uh, but for them, it was of great importance to also have their logo on it. Uh, you will find also a web page where you can that you can put on your website to send parents to and frontline workers. You'll find a copy of our infographic that I showed you earlier, so you can download infographic directly from this page. Now, this is another thing that's been uh, quite popular. We've created a slideshow. Um, I know that sometimes if I go to my uh, daughter's high school, for example, they've got an internal video system where they, they, they've got information um, uh, going through during the day. So there are many uh, recreation centers, schools that basically download our slideshow and play our slideshow throughout the day. I'll just show you what it looks like. It's similar to our postcards, but it's got different, uh, very uh, simple concept about the importance of developing physical literacy. So you'll go, uh, for example, at Windsport, the center, I told you about the sports center, they've got this rolling throughout the day. Uh, we've got printable, printable articles for parents. These are quite popular. One of the favorite, all-time favorites is this one called Eight Ways to Tell if Your Child is Physically Literate. And it's a very simple one-page, uh, attractive, easy to read, and um, very uh, educational article. We've got a little quiz that we've developed that uh, many organizations put on their website for what we've seen with this quiz is that we've seen corporations actually send this to their employees. So corporations that are interested in, in developing the knowledge within their workforce about the importance of fiscal literacy, sending a link to this quiz to, uh, to their employees. And the quiz is designed to be uh, funny in some ways. For example, what is physical literacy? It gives you two um, two options, being able to jump rope and read a book at the same time, or B, being able to skip up, catch, throw, so you can participate in lots of activities with confidence for the rest of your life. So you can see it's a bit of a ridiculous question, and the answer is obvious. But the design is to really uh, get people to enjoy discovering about physical literacy. And when you go to the answer, uh, it gives you a bit more information. It really, this has proven to be quite effective amongst people who never heard about physical li literacy before. Uh, one thing that we've just added, which we're quite proud of, is called our fortune teller. I don't, I don't know if you played this game when you were younger, but uh, I'll show you the instructions so you'll see what I mean. You know, uh, when you put this fortune teller around your fingers and you just you know, played with it and basically you would come to a number and then you would raise and there was a, a dare behind. So what we've done is we've designed a printable fortune teller that um, you know leads to different activities. So this has been quite popular in conferences. Uh, we've had some people, some bloggers, for example, distribute these at conferences to, again, increase the knowledge about fiscal literacy. Uh, posters you can download. Now this is one of our latest uh, addition to is this is a bookmark that basically reproduces uh, what you saw earlier on this on our infographic. And uh, this is kind of cool because it, it combines the it makes the link between reading and being active. And and there's a, a an article that we've published that's been quite popular where we make the the, we link, we, we, we demonstrate how it is similar to raise a physically literate kid as it is raising a literate kid, and also why it matters. So again, if you want uh, copies of this bookmark, send us an email and we'll send you some. And finally, there's a presentation slide that you've seen at the beginning. If you ever want to talk about us, we would appreciate if you ever want to uh, send parents or, or, or staff or educators to our website. This is a slide you can download and add to any presentation that you're doing. So this is Active for Life. These are the resources. Uh, again, everything on our website is free and everything is designed to engage the grassroots into fiscal literacy. Uh, 
as we said, engage them in two ways, uh, both in terms of promotion, but also in terms of provision. So we exist to educate parents about the importance of physical literacy, but we also exist at the same time in order to help people deliver a quality program that actually develops physical literacy in children. And we believe it's the only way that we're going to get kids moving again uh, in North America. On this, I'm, I'm going to leave you with one last thought that um, has been quite instrumental in our thinking. And it goes like this. It's not the strongest of the species that survive, but nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And I think we're, we're, we are in a point in time in our development, our history, our evolution, uh, where things have changed drastically, rapidly, and we must adopt to this change pretty quickly as well before it's too late for this generation of kids. So thank you very much for listening. and. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So. Thank you, Richard. Um, are there any questions? Um, are there any questions? Uh, Bridget Campbell says that the the link to the presentation does not work. Uh, Bridget, it is not up yet, so we'll get to that this afternoon. Uh, we have another question, Richard. What are some ways we can educate parents and staff about physical literacy? Um, what is it, and how do we prepare their ch how to better prepare their children? Um, okay, uh, there's two questions in there. The first one: um, How do we introduce physical literacy to parents and staff. I think what we've discovered is that at Active for Life is you, you need to, to try different you need to try different ways. What, what I mean by this is that you need to you need to offer many entry points. And that's why on Active for Life you'll find um, resources that are quite visual like the infographic and you'll find Articles that 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 are more content or re, re, re you know that you must read. So as you're talking about physical literacy to parents and staff and other people and try to engage them in the concept, uh, start with sound bites, and then when you see some interest, direct people to more in-depth resource. So a sound bite could be you know what kids don't learn to move anymore today. Uh, kids who learn to move will be active for life. Being active for life leads you to being, you know, doing better at school, being up here, and doing better at work, and so on. So the sound bite is that nibble that I talked about earlier, the the the, the taste of something new. And what we realized through through the years as well is that if you find the right sound bites, people share it. Um, uh, you know, we get 100,000 page views a month and more now at Active for Life, and, and we don't have any budget to market. And we've realized that the reason people come to, to our site is because it's designed, written, uh, and tailored to our audience's taste, desire, and needs. So that, that's the long answer to the short question. Start with sound bites, give many entry points. Not everyone learns the same way. Uh, distribute interesting articles, distribute infographics or images, and um, you'll get what we've realized is when you do that, the majority of people are interested in knowing more. Great, thank you. Another question is, what are some easy ways to start improving physical literacy knowledge in educators of young children who don't know what physical literacy is or are not physically literate themselves? That's an amazing question. Um, well, the tools I've shown you, for example, uh, those postcards are quite effective with teachers, we, we've realized, and educators, and child care uh, workers, and, and, and uh, leaders. Um, I, I told you about Scotland. They realize that this postcard, the postcard we produce, is what they need to introduce a concept to teachers in Scotland. Um, 
the other thing, the second part of the question is quite relevant. Uh, we we are focusing a lot on the daycare and childcare cent sector right now. And one thing that we've realized is that many of the people who work in daycares and childcare do not perceive themselves as being sporty. And uh, and one thing we, we, we are doing is we're trying to help these people a, recognize that they don't need to be sporty. They don't need to be athletes to help kids develop physical literacy. Physical literacy is not about sport. Uh, if, you know, if you are physically literate and you choose to be an athlete, you'll be a better athlete, but this is not why we're doing this and it, it's not about sports. So what we've discovered with these daycare workers is that having the free resources, as I've shown you earlier, Having those activities, having those uh, those lesson plans available for free helps them develop the confidence. And the second element is a tiny bit of education. Um, you don't need a lot, but just to spend, you know, if you're the leader of a daycare, if you're the owner of a daycare, you're the, uh, the principal of a daycare, if you just spend 45 minutes going through some activities and doing the activities with your staff, that's enough to give them the confidence required and to overcome the fact that they don't perceive themselves as athletes or sporty to actually turn the trend around. Uh, as you, uh, as we, yeah, so that I could go on forever about this, but I, I think I've answered the question. Yes. Um, one more question. Do you see physical literacy being impacted by overscheduled, overprogrammed, or high pressured sports culture? Absolutely. Um, I, I'm, we, we speak, we work with, and we collaborate with many organizations. Uh, there's a concept in, that we are trying, well, there's a concept that we've developed called the new, new normal. And this new normal is basically helping every national sport organization in Canada deliver uh, something called the long-term athlete development model. So if you have a chance, uh, type in LTAD uh, in, in Google and you'll see exactly what this is about. And this is a big effort on our part and on the part of organizations like uh, Sport for Life and Hockey Canada and Soccer Canada to change the mentality amongst parents that, you know, for them to understand that before puberty, it's important for kids to do many sports. Um, you know, you probably see the same thing with baseball in the United States as we see with hockey in Canada. Parents want their kids to, to be big athletes and they think that, well, the only way to do this is to specialize early. So my son at seven or my daughter at seven will do nothing but baseball or nothing but hockey or soccer or whatever sport. And what we're what this, what science tells us is that is very negative and has very negative effects on children's health and also on, on their mental side. They basically burn out and drop out. They get more injured and they drop out of the sport. So. Again, uh, this presentation was not about sport, but we are putting a lot of ener energy and effort in trying to change that mentality, that need to overschedule kids and over-specialize them too early. So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. We appreciate you sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Thanks for everyone for taking part in our webinar today, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll take all this wonderful information back to share with your your friends and colleagues. The slides, resources, and a recording of the webinar will be posted to the Be Active Kids webpage on our trainers section. You will also receive a follow-up email that will contain links along with a brief survey. Please check back to the Be Active Kids webpage for additional physical activity webinars and resources in the future. Thanks and have a great day everybody.